Souls-like is a game that's kind of like Dark Souls, and the term Souls-like gets thrown around quite a bit. A third-person RPG with stamina-based combat and rolling? Yeah, that's a Souls-like. A game where you play as a little bug in a fallen kingdom fighting other bugs? Yeah, that's also kind of Souls-y. Whatever it might be, I like to find Souls-likes that you probably haven't heard of. So if that sounds interesting, this is episode 18 of Steam Dumpster Diving. But first, I have something Elden Ring related to show off. I have once again been sponsored by and have partnered with Displate to make a metal poster, and I use this as a chance to commission some fantastic art from the very talented Kevin's Computer. Just like the other posters I have, the idea was to reimagine Elden Ring coming out during the N64 era or some sort of tactile toy set. We spent a long time coming up with fun things to include and figuring out how to fit everything together. Personally, I absolutely love it. I'll talk about it more at the end of the video, but if you'd like to own this display for yourself, check out the link in the description. Thank you very much, and here's the rest of the video. Alright, first up is The Last Hero of Nostal Gaia. This is a game that claims to be a satirical Souls-like. I got so many comments from people wanting me to try this game, and that's because it seems like the type of game that was practically made for this series. In fact, even the top review mentions me by name, which is kind of funny. So yeah, let's check it out. Alright, we have character customization. And nothing does anything. Yes, indeed. It is called Nostal Gaia, where the- Wait, wait, cut, cut, cut! Was that your customization screen? <laughs> oh, almighty save me. I don't know what you are, but you're no hero. So, I'm not playing the intro. Okay, that's fair. And so it was, the would-be hero became. Had it dignity, it would impale itself on its own appendages and rid us of its pixelated shame. Hello. That's cool how they kind of just turn into pixels. I wonder if backstabbing's in this game. Yep, there you go. They're actually just going for Dark Souls combat system, like, one-to-one -one, it feels like. Ah, a beacon. A conduit through which heroes once communed with Nostalgia. Don't you dare lay your pixels upon it! I mean, this has to be the bonfire. Oh, that's a cool effect. That's cool. What in the void are you? Uh, I'm gonna do stick person gesture. You don't know what you are, or why you're here. No! No? The hero was rejected! Oh. oh okay. Alright, boss. Boss time. Yeah, you're pretty slow, man. I don't think, uh... No! The spirit had a final fall! Oh. A final fall! Ow, that hurt. That hurt a lot. That hurt a lot. Alright, alright. Clock. Lock. There we go. Alright, that wasn't bad. It's like a solid first boss. Wait a second. No. That's actually just Firelink Shrine. It literally is. I'd recognize that anywhere. Alright, yeah, they just put Firelink Shrine in the game. Why not? They even got the little well. I still really like that effect. Look upon the world around you. What do you have restored by your touch? So I click on it and click remember. Oh, okay. That's actually a really fun system. Okay, I get it. So this part right here is like the hint that it's giving you of where you need to go. And then once you go there, you help it remember and then you get like a, a buff for the weapon, like permanently. And it looks like you also get like a little bit of lore. That's a really fun system. I like that a lot. It's like a mini scavenger hunt that helps you engage with the lore of the game at the same time. You used to leave messages for other heroes. Oh wait, this game has a messaging system. That's fun. Watch out for a quick enemy. Well, <laughs> thanks message. Master Chef. Is that supposed to be like Master Chief? Is this game just gonna have a bunch of video game references? All right, so I just got this hammer weapon. Uh, let's check out the special move. Oh, that's fun. All right, let me see if I can actually hit someone with it. Oh my god, he went so far! Hello, who are you? Hero. Hurt us. What? Alright, I mean, if you really want me to, I guess. 
Yes! Our bond begun! Okay, that's... <laughs> I literally just found the Dark Souls armor set. Or Dark Souls 3, rather, I think. Suddenly, um, a cow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, pretty random, but whatever. Who are you? Oh, wow, look at Hork. Golly gosh, look at you! You really are retro, huh? Neat! I'm the Reservoir of Pain. Oh, okay. Can you attack NPCs in this game? Oh! Oh, <laughs> What? Oh, it hurts! Oh, yeah, it hurts! <laughs> how many masochist NPCs are there? What the hell? I like how they have the little pickaxe icon. It's like they're a RuneScape character or something. Oh, it's a hole. Yeah, you're right. Suddenly, a fire erupted to burn the kindling down. Okay. Are you ready to face the unknown at our side? I don't know if I've said it already, but... The voice acting in this game is actually pretty great. Alright gang, we're going to fight some monster. Oh my god, what is that? Oh hey, it's you. That guy. No it. Merkel help. Oh. Uh yeah, help me out. Together. I'm assuming this is gonna be like an NPC helper for a, a boss fight. Oh hello. The grinder. <laughs> it's just the gank squad boss. Get him, Merkel. Finish him. I'll finish him. Alright, GG. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is that just a bunch of bodies mashed together? That's awesome. Yo, what's up? Finish him. Alright, that's pretty easy. Is it not over? Yo, this music rocks. Oh. Okay, wait, now it's phase one and two at the same time. Got it. Oh! Hang in there, buddy. Go, shurikens, go! Okay, whew. First try, that was actually pretty tough. That was a cool fight. Perhaps one more interference? Hmm? Suddenly! Oh. Choo -choo. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that all the narrator's gonna do? Alright, I think I'm gonna keep playing on my own and then get back after I finish. Let you know what I think. The Last Hero of Nostal Gaia. I expect many fans of Souls Lakes to get a kick out of this one. Overall, it's a solid experience and refreshingly lighthearted take on the genre. But my own feelings are more complicated, and it's a bit of a mixed bag. The short version is, it's a game with a few cool ideas and charm, but a messy execution. And while I'm leaning toward it ultimately not being for me, I still think there's a lot of people who will play this and have a great time. What I expected was a satirical take on Souls Lakes. What I got was a surprisingly straightforward yet competent Souls-like. The Stanley Parable This Is Not. If you go in expecting Stanley Parable Dark Souls like I did, you'll be disappointed. The framing device of the narrator speaking directly to the player is very front-loaded. He has plenty to say at the start as he mocks the player and jokes around. This was a refreshing twist for a Souls-like. After that, however, he's mostly silent and only chimes in briefly to be rude or give backstory as you enter new zones and encounter bosses. Or, you know, he'll do something random like drop a cow on you. The voice acting is great, but there's not much wit to what's being said most of the time. A lot of these missed the mark for me, and I kept thinking of how the potential for the setup was mostly wasted. Speaking of front-loaded, it feels like the beginning of the game got more attention and the game was steadily decreasing in quality as I continued. Some of these areas are complete slogs to get through, with extremely questionable level design, and I was definitely ready for the game to be over when I finally got there. The one exception to this is the portion where you have to fight the narrator himself, and it's a creative sequence where he does everything he can to stop you from reaching him. I would have loved more stuff like this. But yeah, as far as the parody aspects go, the rest of the game is just a lot of random video game references. Like, hey, do you remember this sword? Do you remember this shield? And that's fine, but not exactly satirical, and it feels like it's used as a crutch in place of humor. In between the silence of the narrator, you'll just straight up be playing a Souls-like. And like I said, it's solid, but this is about as Souls-like as it gets in terms of combat, level structure, character builds, and hell, even NPC quest lines. The combat and gameplay feel shockingly close to Dark Souls. Take it from someone who's played a lot of these. This one is very similar. I think a lot of people will find this familiarity fun, and if what you want from a Souls-like is an experience that's mechanically very close to the actual Souls series, you'll probably like this. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people, because my favorite Souls-likes are typically those that put their own spin on the gameplay. The only spin here is the special attack on my sword. So if you're like me, 
that means your enjoyment of the game is going to hinge on the charm that comes from the rest of the game, like the satirical elements. And as I've covered, they might not land for you. The other big element of this game is the level design. Like I said, it starts off pretty okay and gets progressively worse the deeper into the game you get. Despite that, the way they managed to make the zones interconnected with shortcuts was well done and deserves credit. If you love opening doors that don't open from the side, you will have a field day with this game. Lastly, I want to again point out how fantastic the remembering mechanic for armor and weapons is. It fits in nicely with the game's theme of a retrograding world whose inhabitants have forgotten the role they used to play for heroes, and it's a fun way to encourage engaging with the lore while exploring and backtracking. I genuinely think FromSoft should consider implementing a similar mechanic for a future game. I'd give this game a pretty okay out of 10. It's a higher caliber than most games I feature in these videos, and while I was personally disappointed by the missed opportunities, inconsistent quality, shoddy attempts at satire, and a failure to stick the landing, there's some neat stuff here, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who will enjoy it for what it is. Next up is the demo for Najuran's Will. This game is co-op only, which means I got another excuse to play a video game with Vadi Vidya. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm the red guy, you're the blue guy. Let's do it. Can I hit you? Oh man, here we go again. Wait, there actually is friendly <laughs> fire. There's always friendly fire. <laughs> Why are we only playing the friendly fire games? Revival costs one health point. Oh, so you, you revive people with your own health. That's interesting. So can you revive me? Yeah. Wait, you actually can't. You only have one health left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, GG, bye. You can't revive me. No, you're dead, bye. Wait, <laughs> we both lose or? I'm sure we both lose. All right, so let's not do that. Okay. Ooh. Okay, now PVP just got interesting. <laughs> Lift. I can pull it and I can push it. That's kind of neat. Also, I figured out uh, you can jump with the A button, which is cool. Oh, you can dodge with B as well. So, you know, it kind of vaguely souls like. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, this is awesome. <laughs> This is actually sick. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty cool. Can you do anything while I'm holding you like that? Like, does anything do anything? I can, like, wiggle. <laughs> Thank you. A front of unusually dark clouds appeared from the vessel like, side. It's AI Without voice, but it's, like, edited. Spread and soon covered the entire yeah, it feels weird. The torch wasn't lighted, although the bowl was full of oil. Don't you... F I can swim. Oh wait, yeah, I take damage, I take damage! Ease. Lift me back, lift me back! <laughs> I'll get you, I'll get you! <laughs> Please! <laughs> no, that's the wrong button! Pull, pull! Okay. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Ooh, a shield. Wait, wait, hold on. Stand on it? Okay. See? Oh, hell yeah. That's cool, because I can control my character now. And I could like, attack and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> wait, <What>? oh, <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. This wait. is getting really no, meta. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought it was a really good idea. Stand on the shield. Stand on it. Oh, we can both levitate. Wait, lift, wait. Me, lift me first, please. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Wait, too far away, too far away. Come closer, come closer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, can we just skip the whole game like this? Wait, wait we're, we're just, moving. We're, we're moving. We're going, we're going up, not like... <laughs> We're not like going north, we're just going higher, right? Well, how high can we go, though, is the question. Let's just let it go for like maybe a minute. It is weird because like because of the isometric perspective, it's hard to mm. tell how high we actually are. Like we just seem like giants, you know? It's really scary at this point to let go, you know, you first. I'm still up here. <laughs> I'm still up here. I live, bitch. Oh, down I come. <laughs> hey. Can't we just fly through the whole level like that, like moving each other? Well, we, we can't control it, though, can we? Wait, yeah. I, guess, I guess we can't. Okay, no, we can't. We can't do it. We can't do it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Oh my god. All right, a little closer. That's good. God damn it. Oh, you died straight away. The perspective makes it hard to, like, gauge the jump. Hold on, make the line up. There we go. Okay. Yes. So now you're going to have to grab me midair. Are you ready? Yep. All right, ready, go. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Shit, shit, shit. Okay. This is complete Dark Souls 2. Oh, wow. One health. Wait, so now we're constantly checkpointing back to low health? Yeah, the problem is we're, we have this checkpoint and it's not giving us our health back from the checkpoint. I hope they change that in the actual game. Oh, fuck, it's here now. What? No, I got a bomb. I got a bomb. No, come here. Come here. Yeah, all right. Nice. Wait, we got, we got to flame it. Uh, that exploded for so much damage. I can't believe you're experimenting with, like, projectile ignition. Here oh. we go. Here we go. Here we go. No, no, bring him to him. It didn't do <laughs> shit. Okay, I'll grab another one. I'll grab another one. Fine. Wait, no, I got it stuck on the rock. It's fine. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, no, you got all the time in the world. Okay, go. 
That did not work at all. It's like a wet thud. <laughs> oh, there's two. There's two? That's good. Wow. I'm stuck. God, I hate the combat. <laughs> oh god, it's Eat him! Eat him! <laughs> just, run, boxes, just run, right? just run, just run, just run. You get stuck on the boxes. You get stuck on the boxes, see? <laughs> I hate this. Oh. It'll come over and like, I'll like hit it with this right here and it won't get to us. And then it will come and kill us. <laughs> No, it'll get, it'll get stuck on the big box. It's delusional. You've, you've been stuck for <laughs> It'll too get long. stuck on the big box. Just trust. Watch, 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 watch. It'll work. Okay, I may have... I may be wrong. <laughs> I always give you, like, the the roughest games to play with me. I know. Yeah, you do. How long was this one supposed to take? <laughs> to be fair, if you cut out all the time we died to the spider, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> you don't even need to dodge, do you? You just need to move. Yeah, moving is better than dodging, I think. It legit is, because then you dodge, like, the wrong direction. Almost, almost. It's gotta be low. It's gotta be low. Oh my god, we got it. Nice. It would be... You're totally right, though. Like, it would be actually fine, I think, if... There was a ranged option. I think it would also be fine if, like, running away was more of an option, but they force you to fight too often. Because it, it almost feels like a survival horror game where, like, the combat is, like, well, purposely bad. Where, like, you're supposed to avoid them, but they also force you. A pair of metal weights need to be placed into specific bolts by the gate. They need to be put at the same time. Okay, so middle and left. Ready, set, go. Nice. Nice. Yes, we did it. All right. What were your impressions overall? fun or not fun could be fun right you sort of hit on something when you said it could be survival horror because i genuinely dreaded getting into combat <laughs> i think it'd be cool if there was like a ranged option right i mean there kind of is with the telekinesis but like it's you're so slow when you use it it's basically impossible to pull it off in combat um i don't overall like i think the like lifting your partner and throwing them around there's a lot of like fun potential with that like I was like genuinely having fun when we were starting with that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it was it was funny. It was fun. I would give this game pretty fun telekinesis out of 10. All right, next up we have the demo for Moon Scars, a Souls-like Metroidvania. The art for this game caught my attention immediately, so let's just jump right in. Yeah, I'm bloody starving. Attack. Okay. X to do charge attack. Okay, cool. Okay, it looks like the healing system is kind of like a Hollow Knight system where you fill it up by attacking and then can just heal whenever you want. That's satisfying. Press the right bumper when enemies charge to perform a parry. Successful parries deal great damage. <laughs> I like that. You just kick them into the spikes. Discover special weapon. Ooh, I get to choose. Oh man, these animations are so good. Look at them. It's so smooth. Hell yeah, let's go. Nice. Okay, so I have to fight a doppelganger of myself now because I rested at this mirror. Oh, that's the end. I don't think I've seen enough to really make an accurate judgment, but this game looks really good, has some neat ideas so far. It could be good. It could be pretty good. I have a good feeling about it. Can't say for sure. I have a good feeling. So I recorded that a few months ago, and I have since then played and beaten the full game. Part of the reason I put it off was because I wasn't in the mood for another Souls-like Metroidvania, and I wanted to wait until I was. But then as I was browsing videos on the game, I saw a comment that said, quote, Between Blasphemous and Hollow Knight, Moonscar stands above all. That is some insane praise. Blasphemous is excellent, and Hollow Knight is a masterpiece. In fact, it's my favorite Metroidvania of all time. So I was like, okay, guess I gotta give the full game a shot. Now to set the record straight, no, I would not place it up there with those games, but it's still good. In fact, it's similar to Blasphemous in enough ways that I'd say there's a good chance you'll have fun with it if you were a fan of that game. Let's start with the obvious. This game looks fantastic. The art is beautiful, and most of the animations are incredible. With the special attacks in particular, there's a mesmerizing weight to the animations. This game was made by a small team, and most of the art and animation was done by just a single person, which is just so impressive. As for the gameplay, the combat is tight and responsive. It's challenging, but manageable, and every death left me with the feeling that I was the one who messed up rather than the game being unfair. Every fight is a dance of 
of dodges, parries, and attacks, and when it clicks, it clicks. The Hollow Knight-esque special meter works great here for healing and magic, where I always felt like I had a chance to make a comeback if I was struggling, while rewarding me with explosive and impactful spells when I was doing well. I also appreciate the way environmental hazards like spikes were integrated so that you can use them against enemies. The platforming is decent, and combat arenas often have me jumping around between platforms during fights. You even get a super dash later on, which is always welcome in a metroidvania. This game does do a few odd things though. First, it has a pseudo roguelike upgrade system where you get passive buffs for killing enemies, but they go away when you die. Last video, there was another game with a similar mechanic, and I criticized it. While I still am not a fan of its inclusion, it's less annoying here. Since it's a reward for combat instead of exploration, you can get back to where you were upgrade-wise fairly quickly. I'm still not a fan though, since it encourages players to grind up buffs if they're stuck on a boss instead of retrying immediately. Second, there's a mechanic where sometimes after you die, a blood moon will spawn, which increases the health and damage of enemies and bosses by a noticeable amount. To make it go away, you need to pay or beat the next boss. It's vaguely similar to Black World Tendency in Demon Souls. I think this is interesting, but between this, the roguelike stuff, and just the overall demanding gameplay, this is a quite punishing game, and not for everyone. I read a handful of reviews from people who quit because of this, and I can completely understand. But yeah, there's a few other neat ideas like Checkpoint that will spawn hostile doppelgangers if you want to use them. And if you're a fan of media that explores the ideas of cloning and humanity, you might get something out of the story being told here. Lastly, the game stumbles at the end with level design and bosses that feel less polished than the first half of the game. And while the combat is consistently good, I feel like it peaks early and doesn't introduce enough new enemies or mechanics throughout to keep it fresh for the whole runtime. All of this amounts to a good, solid game that I think many people will enjoy, just not one I'm begging people to try as a must play. Alright, next up is Samsara. Samsara is a next-gen action-adventure RPG that fuses elements of Buddhism with Souls-like gameplay. Now I'm sure some of you are raising an eyebrow at the term Buddhism Souls-like, but for the series of games that revolves around life and death and coming back to life, it might fit better than you think. And hell, Sekiro already did it by exploring Buddhism in its story. Anyway, let's check it out. Oh, uh, this is a lot to take in already. Got light attack. Heavy attack. Oh my god. Meditate? What does meditating do? You can just like meditate at will. It's kind of interesting. I mean, this is <laughs> this is definitely a Souls-like at the very least. Oh, we have a jump button too. Listen, any game that gives me a jump button, I always say this. I love jump buttons. Oh, here we go. Breath of the Wild moment. Incoming. <laughs> okay, okay. It's cool. I'm liking the lack of direction so far. Like I can maybe just explore? Although there is a... there is this guy. Oh my god. My name's Dujorm. D Dujom. My name's Dujom. And it sounds to me like you were just reincarnated. It's not unusual to forget your previous life, so don't worry about it. That's all in the past. After all, you have a whole new life to enjoy now. I'm actually really interested, because like, this is already so strange. I'm... I'm super curious to see where this goes. Oh fuck, we got skeletons with wings. <laughs> I was not expecting that for a Buddhism game. Okay, um, I guess I'll level up Vigor. I just took the whole chest, okay. Why does this horse look so fucked up? Why is it doing that? What are you doing? What are you- What? I thought we were friends, dude! I need to eat my fruit. God, this is- <laughs> This is so- I don't know, dude. Come on. Also, this game have a day-night cycle. That's kind of cool. Hello, are you gonna... Are you gonna shoot me? Yeah? Okay, do it. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. I have X or Y. Is this like a moral choice? I'm gonna press Y. <laughs> do I get, like, good karma from that? From kicking him in the chest and knocking him out instead of murdering him? Alright, let's try Execute. <laughs> that that's like the same thing why this guy though of all the enemies and models you could have chosen as like a basic enemy why this this does not fit at all we got pigs too god damn that is a giant pig oh is this platforming challenge okay here we go all right hold on, i'm down for this i'm down for this oh this is a long jump <gasps> okay i got it there we go okay Oh, it's you. You're the one guy who's not gonna kill me. Wait, why do I seem to run into you everywhere I go? Hold on, they're acknowledging it. The game's acknowledging the fact that it keeps reusing the same model. If I bore you any ill will, I would have acted on it far sooner. Okay, so you're not gonna explain it then. What is that? Like a spider? 
can't tell. Oh, okay, yep, spider. Also, real quick, does this heal me if I meditate? Oh, it does. Okay. So after every fight, you should just sit down and get your health back. Oh, here we go. Was that the end? Okay, I guess this is like the trailer for the game. So we have all these different environments. Yeah, okay, that was the end. So obviously that was extremely janky in quite a few different ways. But like, I don't know, I still think the idea of this game could kind of be cool. So, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to be too harsh on this. I can tell that like this, I feel like whoever is making this, they're doing it from a place of passion and I want them to keep going with it. Um, it just needs a lot of work. Um, it's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. Fabular, Once Upon a Space Time. Just gonna do the review for this one. This is a top-down roguelike where you fight other spaceships with melee-focused combat in a setting that mixes the Middle Ages with sci-fi. It released into early access back in November. If you're wondering why it has the souls like tag, I don't blame you. It's certainly a stretch here, but there is blocking, parrying, and dodging, so you can kind of see it depending on how flexible you like to get with defining a souls like. Anyway, according to the Steam page, this game was inspired by Hammer Fight and FTL. I'm sure many of you are familiar with FTL, as it's one of the all-time greats of the roguelike genre, and you can easily see the influence by the navigation that occurs between fights as you choose which node to go to while balancing resources like fuel. These nodes have semi-random encounters where you get to choose how to respond. As for the other source of inspiration, I'm gonna guess almost none of you know Hammer Fight. This is a hidden gem from 2009 where you control a physics-based flying machine with only your mouse input. You then fight other flying machines and monsters by whipping your mouse around and hitting them with huge weapons. This game rules, and if there's one thing I hope you take away from this section of the video, it's to go try out Hammer Fight, if only for how unique of an experience it is. But yeah, Hammer Fight's influence can be seen in how Fabular tries to also do physics-based combat, albeit in a different way. I love the art, I love the setting, and I like this game a lot, on paper. Playing it though, I have some issues, and I would probably not recommend this to anyone right now. First, it's important to understand what controlling your ship feels like. It's like pushing a bar of soap around on a near frictionless surface, but the soap has swords attached to it, and you need to hit other bars of soap by getting right next to them, but not too close or else you'll collide and take damage. Also, some bars of soap will try to shoot you while you fight the other ones. I'm sure that sounds awful to a lot of you, but I was actually on board still due to how unique it is. The problem arises in how sloppy it all feels, especially when you have to fight multiple enemies at once. The number of micro adjustments you need to make to adjust your trajectory on top of timing dodges and parries results in very finicky and demanding fights. Boss fights are especially rough with the amount of stuff on screen you need to juggle. Some enemies are literal buzzsaws that will grapple onto you or pin you against asteroids. It's just overwhelming, and the best strategy seems to be backpedaling as you slowly chip away at them. Don't even get me started on the third boss that turned into a bullet hell. When you take the control scheme into consideration, this is some of the most brutal gameplay I've seen in my life. The bottom line is that it feels virtually impossible to completely avoid damage most of the time, and this is a game where even small amounts of damage pile up. There are ranged options, but they require energy, and you only get energy by killing enemies with melee, so you'll be using melee most of the time. So if you want to win, you gotta really take your time and be as precise as you can. The other big component of this game are the FTL-esque random encounters, but there's just no variety here. They almost always lead to a fight with space bandits, and I felt like I saw literally every encounter after only a few runs. I understand it's an early access, but there needs to be far more to engage people for more than a couple hours. Also, you can upgrade your ship, but it's expensive, and these are almost always minor upgrades adding stuff like a few percentage points to a stat rather than something more impactful. As a rule of thumb, I'd say impactful and distinct is the way to go for character builds in a roguelike with real-time combat. What all this leads to is every run feeling more or less the same. The only variety you're going to get is if you happen to find a different weapon from a merchant, but there's only a small handful of different options right now. But the real kicker, and this is one of the wildest design choices I've ever seen on a roguelike, is that if the game thinks you're doing well, it will permanently increase the difficulty of the zone you're in for all subsequent runs. This is not optional, you can't toggle it off. I kept getting my ass kicked by the zone 2 boss, so I sped through the first zone with the logic of, hey, maybe I'll have more health to spare by the time I get to the boss I'm stuck on. Then I was hit with Realm Difficulty Increased. You can imagine how demoralizing it was for the game to get permanently harder when I hadn't even beaten the second boss a single time. Every run through Zone 1 would simply be more difficult from now on, and by extension, Zone 2 would be harder as well since I had less resources to spare, and it blows my mind to have a mechanic that permanently punishes the player for doing well in the roguelike genre. Now, this game was kickstarted all the way back in June of 2016. I mention this because while I think there's a lot of potential with this game, I'm personally doubtful that it will get to the point where I'll want to revisit it if this is where it's at after six and a half years. By all means though, I would love for this game to improve and succeed, so feel free to give it a shot if it seems interesting. It offers a unique experience, and in a world with heaps of games that play similarly, something genuinely different is great to see, even if it misses the mark, so I'm wishing the devs the best of luck. 
All right, next up is Mine Souls 3, an epic crossover between Dark Souls 3 and Minecraft. Let's do it. All right, this is Mine Souls 3, a game that's published by Bonsai Nemico and developed by Frumage Software. We're literally just doing Dark Souls 3. I can, I immediately recognize this as uh, the starting area of Dark Souls 3. I can roll around, that's perfect. And that's attacking, of course. It's interesting that this is its own download. It, like this feels like a Minecraft mod. Bonefire lit. There we go. It's the Ludix gun deer. Fuck yeah. Game and Elden Ring is in fucking shambles. There we go. Wow. This is, um... Are you the fire keeper? <laughs> the high wall of Lothric. What is this, dude? You got the dragon corpse. That's great. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, fuck yeah. I got the claymore. Alright, come on. Dude. Like... <laughs> He didn't even try with this section. This does not look like the courtyard. All right, here he is. He's a... Uh, he's a dog, I guess. I have firebombs, I think. Hold on. Yeah, I'll show you some firebomb. <laughs> All right, I did it. That's... that's probably the end, right? It's always fun when, you know, you cross over Dark Souls with some other random game. But, uh, you know, cool idea! All right, next up is Monomyth, and I would not have found this if several of you didn't comment about it. It's an immersive sim inspired by Kingsfield, and that's why I'm including it. For those of you who don't know, Kingsfield was the series of games that FromSoft made before Demon Souls and Dark Souls, and they were first-person dungeon crawlers that share a lot of similarities with the Souls series. Now, this particular game is not really going to be exactly like Kingsfield, because it's taking inspiration from a lot of other places as well, but I thought it'd be a fun inclusion, so let's check it out. All right, yeah, definitely getting Kingsfield vibes already. All right, so left click is punch. Can I break stuff? Hell yeah. Oh. Well, hold on, I gotta break some more pots first. Pick up items with F. Bone club. See, I really like this as an opening so far. Like, set the tone, set the mood. Don't immediately throw skeletons at me. What, you can pick up stuff? And you can throw them. Okay, okay, that's huge. That's huge. See, the reason that's so huge is that you can move stuff like this around and use it for platforming. And I can also probably use it as like a projectile weapon, you know, like I can throw it at a monster. Love stuff like that. Rest of the shrine to heal, level up, or tune magic. Oh, wait, so this game has like a checkpoint bonfire system. I like how my options are level up, attune magic, and atone for sins. I, I can already tell this is one of those games I'm gonna have to break every barrel because one of these is gonna have something. Oh, we got enemies. We have slime. Oh, God. Ow, that did a lot of damage. That did so much damage! I'm almost dead! Oh my god, this is so Kingsfield. Just slowly beating up a slime. I love stuff like this. I love stuff like this so much in games. You can sit in the chair! A sit from this potion and you feel light as a feather. Okay. Can I use the lockpick? That lock is too complicated. Damn. Too sturdy. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. That means breaking it is an option if I was strong enough. Oh, that was a trap. Too bad I'm too quick, though. Oh, there's something under the pillow. Aha! I really like hiding stuff in the environment. You have to, like, physically move it to get to it. All right, I'm gonna go for the sneak attack. Or you know what? Hold on. If I just throw a bottle at it. Okay, that was bad. Oh. Hell yeah. See, I knew it. I knew they'd have something eventually. See, now I have to break everything. Pl wait, what? This is so unnecessary, but so cool. Um, is this a portal or like a force field? I think it's a force field. Is this dynamite? Uh, what do I want to do with this? Oh, I have a really good idea. What if I, what if I take this to an enemy and then throw a firebomb at it? All right, drop it. Okay. <laughs> so when I pressed the firebomb button, I thought it would like arm it, you know, like I take it out and get ready to throw it rather than just throw it immediately. It seems like dying doesn't revert your progress because I'm one firebomb down now. Oh wait, is that a bloodstain? Adventure's memory. Okay, wait, so it does have the souls mechanic of recovering your bloodstain. That's interesting. That's pretty uncommon for this, uh, this genre. So I have magic arrow equipped now. It explodes when it touches a solid surface. All right, time for magic arrow. Nice. <laughs> 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 
One thing I really like about this checkpoint system, it prevents safe scumming, which is like pretty common with immersive sims, I think. So leaning into like the souls checkpoint system kind of eliminates that, and I love that. This rat is beating my ass. There's <laughs> Did my own spell kill me? I mean, I guess that makes sense if it's an explosion. This looks really suspicious. And I have a shovel. I knew it. I knew it. Ring of focus. Bonk. Let's see if there's any reacts to a bottle. Nope. That's disappointing. <gasps> I found a sword, finally. But I don't have enough strength, no. Oh my god, that scared me. Run, 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 run. Oh, he's quick, he's quick. But can you jump? Aha. Now what? So there's flour on the table. I picked up some water. Does this work? Oh my god, it does! That's so fun. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. I have the dough. Can I cook it? You... This is... This is making me so happy. You can make your own bread. Oh yeah, and I had those... I had those bloody bandages from earlier. Can I clean those? In the water? You can. Okay. The way this level is like wrapping around on itself and how vertical it is. I... I love this. This is so good. Dude, my, my guy is so weak. He's over encumbered from holding one bone and one shield. Wait, I just realized this game has dodging. You can dodge the side and back. Okay. That would have been good to know earlier. I made a mistake and jumped over that wall, and now I'm kind of stuck here. Um, so this is a great time to test out if the feather potion actually works. It says you feel light as a feather. God, I hope that's right. Let's go. I think it's working. It actually works! Alright, I have enough strength for the sword now. This would be a really good time to have a lockpicking skill that wasn't zero. Die. Oh my god, it actually worked! Okay, wait, hold on a second, look at this. So there's a room in here, I can see through this window. Just wall. And then bookshelves. So, I think I can maybe like move this bookshelf somehow? Or break it? Okay, this is a really dumb idea. But let's just see. What if I can blow up the bookshelf with this explosive? Oh man, I was really hoping that would have worked. Is there like a fake book? Oh, there we go. It's always the fake book. Should have known. I want to test out this harpy root. It says it lets me jump higher for a short time. Oh. You can actually jump super high with this. Wait, you could you could get to places with this. Huh. Is fall damage still the same? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I finally got all four green seals. I'm guessing that's the end. Yep. There you go. The full version of Monomyth is coming June 2022. <laughs> well, that apparently was not the case, but that's okay. Yeah, so I really enjoyed this. I think immersive sims are one of those genres that I just wish there were more games of, but it mixes that with the Kingsfield and like a bit of the soulsiness in a way that's just so compelling to me. The way you can interact with the environment and all the spells and all the stuff you can collect and the secrets and the level design it's all it's all great the melee combat is pretty bare bones but i'm not really surprised by that and honestly it's fine that's that's just how kingsfield is that's how these types of games are it's whatever yeah that was a blast i'm super pumped for the full game so the rest of the video is just going to be me talking about the poster I mentioned uh, 40 minutes ago at the start of the video. Once again, it's an Elden Ring inspired poster by Kevin's Computer. Super talented artist. Please go follow him. He's amazing. But yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff here. The first thing I want to point out is the Melania thing we threw in. So it's the player, the player's mimic, and then a piece of cheese. And the idea with this one was it's kind of like a shish kebab, right? So the cheese is reinforcing that joke, but it's also a joke about how most players cheese the boss. Us. You know, you get it? <laughs> Here we got Morgoths, and this is kind of an obscure reference, but we were going for Cranky Kong hitting Donkey Kong with his cane. <laughs> so there's that. I also just want to point out Radon. I love this whole Caleb section with the dog and Radon coming down, just 
face first is so funny. It's so good. At the bottom left, we have Turtle Pope, and we were going for kind of like a Mario Koopa shell reference with the, the green shell. I like how that came out. Here we have Ronnie, Blythe, and EG. And EG is reading them a story, and there's a picture of the moon in the book. And it's supposed to be like he's telling them about the moon and like moon magic stuff. But also because Blythe is a wolf, he sees the moon and he howls, you know, because he's a wolf. And then of course you also have Ranala peeking down from the top left, looking down at them. I like that. This limb grave section is really fun. I love how Torrent came out. One of the challenges was to represent as many of the areas as we could. So for example, Fair Missoula, we represented with like a tornado. You got Malekith's sword kind of floating around there. Love how that turned out. Then in the top right, you have the fire giant making soup with the forge of the giants. That was all Kevin. Such a fun idea. And yeah, there's a bunch of other little things, but I don't want to spend too long talking about it. Overall, I love how this came out. It's such a fun poster. It's one of those posters where you can just kind of stare at it for a while and find little hidden things everywhere. It's so colorful. It's so fun. And it's a piece of art like I'm personally just happy to have up on my wall. When it comes to making merch, I just want to make stuff that I think is cool. I don't want to do any like YouTuber merch, none of that like branded stuff. I just want to make something cool that I think other people will genuinely like to have. That's it. So again, if you're interested, check out the link in the description and you can get it for yourself. And if you made it to the very end of this video, thank you so much for watching. This was a really long one. I've had a lot of those recently, but um, it's been fun. I've been having a blast making these videos still, and it blows my mind that people still enjoy watching them. So thank you again. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and have a good one.